This is the intro for the Hatcher Show. He didn't want to do nothing, so he's standing there. So what is Grand Archive? Well, you get to erect a powerful, throbbing archive. Swell to level two. Dominate the competition. Use deep fissure energy. Plant your world seed. Grand Archive. Wait, it's a game? For real? All right, now that that silliness is out of the way, let me give you my initial impressions of Grand Archive. Now understand, I have a deep history with Magic the Gathering, so that's what I'm gonna use as a reference point for this game when talking about the mechanics. So overall, I think Grand Archive has some genuine potential. One of the things I really like about the game is it doesn't actually have a land system. How it works instead is you pick cards from your hand, you put them face down on the table, and basically that pays the cost. But at the end of the turn, you're gonna get to scoop those cards back up and put them into your hand. So you're not really losing those resources, but there's another twist to it where there's a little side deck of cards that you can actually play specifically using those cards you've played face down. But if you do, they're removed from the game entirely. So you're done with them. You don't have access to it. So there is an interesting bit of tension there where you can hobble yourself accidentally by getting rid of powerful cards. But also I love the fact that you can just jump out of the gate and start playing with whatever hand you have. Whenever I start a new game, I'm always wondering, is this a hand where I'll actually be able to dive in, get going, start slugging? And Grand Archive was really straightforward in that regard. We played the Psy deck and the Sword Lady deck. I can't remember her name, maybe it's Fiona, I have no idea. But anyways, that deck is mostly like direct damage and creature boost, where it's like, I'm gonna smack your guy, or I'm gonna beef my guys up and slam into you with swords and all kinds of boosts. Whereas the other deck was a wizard style deck that used a bunch of really annoying little magical artifacts and stuff to set up defensive magic barriers. There's a barrier mage that was genuinely thwarting my ability to punch through. And the fact that right when you play the creatures, you can swing with them right away, but if you swing with your creatures, then they're tapped. And you can actually attack tap creatures to destroy them and they can't hit back. So there is a lot of tension right out of the gates in terms of, do I wanna swing with my creatures right away? I do actually find that quite enjoyable. I didn't sit there going, okay, we've gotta do a slow buildup. But at the same time, while the game jumps onto the table, it didn't feel like it was gonna be over in two seconds, like if you're playing super old school magic and you're just like, Mox, Mox, Lotus, bam, ba 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 combo, I win, right? So it does have a nice progression and flow to it. I haven't played a ton of it, but my initial impressions are that this game has a genuine bit of potential and there is some fun flavor behind it as well where you have these different champions and the idea is that they're in this other realm but they'll be sent to protect different worlds that need protection and if they do a good job they gain prestige and powers and they're super super powerful in this other world but going through the dimensions basically weakens their power because they're not connected to the same level of energy but they can attune themselves to the new world and gain abilities that are native to the world they're on there is definitely some interesting stuff going on with this game so I was asked to talk about it I've done so and I'm gonna continue to keep my eye on Grand Archive so I can keep my own two eyes firmly fixed on the prize